See, the good thing is the kids that I do. Oh, never mind. It's Wednesday, October 7th. I just started recording class. Uh, my regular kids, we're going to get into me making fun of kids, but that doesn't really tell you what's going to happen because that's just a day that is why. Uh, we are going to get into talking about the short story mountainy thing, and then we're going to take some examples, and then we're going to get into a new short story that we're going to get into today that is about death. I've been teasing death up till now because many of our stories talk about death, but ain't nobody actually dying. We're finally going to get to a story that may actually have actual death in it, which apparently brings excitement to children because they need therapy. But we're going to get there. Uh, so it's a long blog. Uh, for those of you who are watching at home, you're going to need notesy sheet because we're going to get to notesy sheet here in just a moment. Those of you who are here live, you should definitely have notesy sheet. Those of you whose name is Kate, you should definitely have a piece of paper that you can write all this information down on so I would not have to look for you. And there's a random phone number. Oh, okay. And so there, I did the picture already. Uh, for those of you who are watching this at home, I'm going to take a photograph of you when you come to class. So that way I know who will be here and I can make it look all special. Mario, did you turn it in? With your name on it. And you're hot. You just roll your eyes at me like I'm the crazy one. All right, I'll let you sit for now. I'm the hot. Gary all had a stroke. It's okay. I'm the off chance you're not lying to Nick. All right, let's go there. We covered B.2. I already tortured kids in here, so we're good to go there. Then to this part. So I believe we finished this with you guys and we covered the five parts, correct? Yeah. All right. Did we cover the short, easy versions yeah. of each one? Wow, yeah. family, settle down, Ty. In that case, you should be able to tell me the answers as I go through and ask them. Yeah. Oh, you weren't quite as eager on that one. So let's find out. So those of you who are at home, I said you are the cra oh, well, I mean, uh, crazy. You're, are you still having trouble spelling? All right. There you go, third time's the charm, Jerriel. And yes, I'm not denying that I'm the crazy one. That's how I recognize crazy in other people. Those of you at home, if you would like to play the I get to yell at Mr. Proviac game, you could do that here in just a moment. If you want to unmute yourself and not have weird sounds going on in the background, I'm gonna be asking questions out loud and you're welcome to then try to yell the answer at me. You just can't be delayed by too much where we all get done and move on, then you're like, mom, and you come in like that, and that's gonna drive me nuts, and we're gonna have to mute you all, so don't make me have to strangle you. Annette, stop trying to have fun, Annette. I keep seeing you smile. This is school, this is not a place for fun. I have a bunch of stuff. Then Owen, you probably don't want to, because knowing you, you probably have a, a whole bunch of like crazy second graders running around or something like that, so that's absolutely fine. All right, chillin's here, let's go with, what is the short form of exposition? Boring beginning. Boring beginning. Story. Nicely done. How did you guys come in late? You guys, are, there is no delay for you. You guys are live. Or, never mind. We were trying to cheat off other kids. Rising action is exciting stuff. Again, exciting stuff. For those of you at yeah. home, go ahead and leave the mute off so that I'm watching you guys like. A So just sit there and just be ready to go. All right, we'll, we'll try it again. All right. For the climax, it is? Major yeah. OMG. OMG, OMG moment. moment. OMG moment. Okay, we're good. Okay, so settle down, Tiger. You don't have to say it the one time. I, I heard all of you horrible zombie choir children. And then we, we get to following action, it is? OMG. OMG explained. OMG moment. And resolution is boring the boring ending, boring ending stuff. Ending stuff. <laughs> Noise is words. Wait, by the way, for those of you at home, realize when you speak, it lights up on my screen to know who you are. So when you're cough, cough, Maxwell, and you lean off screen to yell the wrong thing, your whole screen lights up for me. So I know who you are. You cannot hide when you yell the wrong answer loudly. That's how I know it's Jerry L. Every time Jerry L goes <laughs> into the screen, I know it was him, is your screen lights up. You special, special children. All right, so then we got to this part of it, correct? No. All right, so here, thank you. <laughs> you look so disapproving, PJ, it's okay. You should get like Mr. Borviak, no, we have not done that kind of, then we'll do it real quick. So on here, here's why on this screen, 
it says mountain because essentially as we read a story, it becomes mountain. On your paper, if you want to help yourself out, you can draw a little mountain and then you can just draw arrows or label it like that. Do you have to? No, it's just to help you when it comes up to things later. As always, you are welcome to ignore me. I would hate to take that away from you. So the purple is how much interesting stuff is going on in the story. The more purple, the more interesting it is. The less purple, the less interesting it is. So at the very beginning of the story, there's not a whole lot of interesting stuff happening because we're just introducing characters. So what's that first part called? Exposition. The very beginning of it is just the exposition. Then our mountain starts to increase. Rising all action. Now you are interested in what is happening. So what is that called? Rising action. Nicely done. Good job, by the way, Jerry. You look like you're barely awake, but you're responding, so I appreciate it. And then you get to the most exciting part of the story, and the most exciting climax. part is climax. done, which is the OMG moment and the climax. And once you've had that, now you're already like, oh, it's not nearly as exciting as it was before. So you start losing interest, and that becomes the falling action. Good job. And then we get to the very last part of the story. Where they're wrapping things up, and again, now it's kind of boring, and that is the ending. Nicely done. Good teamwork on that one. Um, oh, Emmeline, I'm sorry. I'm, I'll try not to harass you too much like your iPad keeps harassing you. Now, we're, we're going to practice seeing how well you can put all these together. So I'm going to give you a couple of our stories we've done, and I'm going to give you parts of the story and see if you can match up which part goes to which. You're going to get a chance to play it with your hand. Those of you at home, you get to use your hand also. What I'm going to do is show you the five parts of the fisherman. And I'll yeah. read through there, and then you're going to tell me which one you think is which. So I'm going to say which one do you think is exposition after I read them, not yet. And then you just hold up fingers, you know, one, or two, or three, or four, or five, something like that. For those of you who are at home, realize when you hold up your hand, if I can't see it, it does no good. So for those of you who just have like your face in there and you're like, my fingers are like over here, I can't see it. So make sure I can actually see your hand. Because I had a kid earlier who kept like holding his hand like this. I'm like, which one is it? He was like, can't you see my hand? I'm like, I can't. So, but you know, those of you who are alive, I, I can see your hands are right here. You can cheat off other kids. They're right there. You can just look at them if you need to. Or you could cheat off yourself. That's called learning. Mr. Brody, I come out? I figured, but we're just trying to help you. All right, allow me to read them to you and we'll have you guys figure out which one is which. The fisherman only fishes a certain number of times and his final time brings in a jar. We just, that was number one. Number two, we discover the genie wants to kill the fisherman and the poor guy must find a way to survive. Three, the fisherman's plan to get the genie back into the jar. Four, the genie begs to be released from the jar. Take off. Five, the fisherman explains his future plans to the genie. Which of those do you think is the exposition? Hold up finger now. And I'm looking at kids cheating off each other. I'm looking at home kids cheating off. Oh, you guys are all telling me I'm the best. You're like, Mr. Proziak, you're number one. Thank you, kids at home. You are correct. Also, Thank you for using that finger when you were choosing to say it was number one. So then what comes after exposition? Nicely done. So now you hold up your number for rising action. This is where things start to get more exciting. So wish, ooh, we have disagreement already. Look at that. Your kids are not cheating off themselves. Let's see, kids at home, we have confused children here. Uh-oh. Kids at home, they're not even voting. They're just staring at the wall drooling. They've given up on life. You can't hold up all of your fingers. Uh, they're, 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 all right. So we have uh, the fishman only fishes a certain number of times. Then the exciting part, rising action, most exciting part. Did you guys hear earlier when I said we we're going to read a story about death and you guys got all excited? If you didn't pick up on it, apparently you guys think death is exciting. So that would be the rising action because it deals with death. So the idea of someone dying brings you guys happiness. That's what made you guys want to read more. Then, our most exciting moment. Most exciting moment going to be? Climax. It's the climax. And then now, once again, hold up your voting fingers. And then 
voting fingers, and then children voting. Then, so the climax of your major turning, you're like, oh my god, he's not going to die. Which one of those is him not dying? The climax of that. That's when the fisherman's playing the genie back in the jar. You're like, oh my god, the fisherman's going to die. The genie, oh wait, it worked. Yay! And so that was your OMG moment. Then after climax, falling action. So now you only have two to choose from. So hopefully it made it a little bit easier. Kids at home who are rocking out some bad selves. Um, you only have two. It shouldn't take that. All right, it's taking you guys a long time to figure it out now. All right. And kids were here watching. Uh, I would agree. The genie bags are released from the jar. So they're falling. And what's the very last one going to be? Five. Oh. Five. 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 I knew it was five. It was what the one was going to be. The last one's going to be resolution. By the way, for the first one, I tried to make it super easy. Yeah. <laughs> Put them in order to try and help you out. Because I figured like you guys had your little learning training wheels on. You're like, ah, oh, wobble, wobble, wobble. And I saw some of you guys just going right into traffic. I was trying to help you out. Don't worry, it's going to get worse on the next one because now I get to shuffle them up. Shuffly, shuffly, shuffly. It's okay, it's a different story. That makes it worse. I know, it's okay for me, not for you. <laughs> Y'all are going to die. All right, so now let's jump to Lady and the Tiger. Again, I will read them to you and then you're going to figure out which one comes first. Good job, Philip. You don't want to play my game, Philip. You can't go wrong. The exposition. All right. The princess discovers what is behind each door and then decides which one to point to for the boy. That was one. Two, the girl is caught saying love to the gardener's son, and he is put on trial using the two doors. Three, we find out that the two characters love each other. Four, we are robbed of this in the story because it ends suddenly. Five, the gardener's son walks over the right-hand door and opens it, and we don't get to find out what is there. All right. So which one do you think is exposition? Kids at home. Uh-oh. And already. Then, uh-oh. So this should be the very first thing that happens. We're introducing characters, boring beginning stuff. Those of you who feel strongly, you should be channeling your inner hunger games. As you should be going, oh no, no, for you to hold, but so it should be three. That was the very beginning where you're finding out. Plus, it says love, and everyone knows love is boring. So as soon as it said a love story, you're like, I'm out, boring story. So love equals boring, according to most kids. Then after exposition, we get to rising action. So now, which one are we going for for rising action? And all right, so. Now again, this one has love in it, but it also has death. And that's the only thing that makes love acceptable is the death bit. And now, I, oh, back in here, I'm dying. Okay, I'm excited. So now we go to the deathy bit. So then after rising action, we go to done, Grant. So which one are we gonna go for on climax? You know it's not two and three. And and kids at home. Uh oh. We have disagreements already. So this should be the most exciting. Oh, I see your hand, MJ. Okay, and so this should be the turning point. And I would go with the one also. That's when she discovered which was behind it. And you're like, now given the lady and the tiger didn't have a super exciting part to it. But as far as what you have listed, I'm going to go with that's probably the most exciting part. Then after climax is, oh, all right, you have two to choose from for falling action. And uh oh, we already have disagreements. And PJ is nodding his head like he feels strong. Let's find out. Oh, Jerry got kicked out. Come back, Jerry. All right. I'll say yeah. Make sure Jerry alive. All right. So there. And I would go with. No. No. I'll stop. Hang on a second. It's hard to do. It's not on my screen. It worked. All right. Yeah. That was tricky. Hang on. No, where's my mouse pointer? Uh, All right. Uh, I, we missed you. We cried. Um, I would agree. So you said five. The gardener said walking over to us or falling action. Because the very last thing in the story is going to be. Resolution. And it even tells you it ends suddenly. That is your clue. Story ending suddenly means we lose out on resolution. 
Mr. Brophy, I can feel a little stronger. I can't flex on a couple kids. All right, good. Let's try another one. Yes, I agree. Let's let's go now. The boy world story. The Eric and the whole going and the, the weather and the weather station, the dropping out of school. Hopefully this one's a little bit easier. Let's find out. Again, I will read them to you. We have weather job interferes with school and Eric's grades drop. That's number one. TV station fires Eric when they discover he no longer is in school. That's two. Eric decides he wants to go back to school to get an education. Three. Eric fights with dad and drops out of school to be weatherman. It's four. And we find out that Eric is working at a weather station for a class is five. So which one is going to be our uh, exposition? Five. Kids at home. Uh-oh. We have issues already, kids at home. Weather job interferes with school and Eric's grades drop. I'm going to go with kids at home. They all say one. Kids here all say five. Then, so then which one of those comes first? We find out that Eric is working at a weather station for class or weather job interferes with school and Eric's grades drop. We have to find out who Eric is before we can find out that he has issues. So good job in class kids. You beat those home kids this time. Right, it's the first time, settle down. So then, I know they're all raging at home. They just set a house on fire. After exposition, our next one's going to be Rising action. Now is where we have our conflict and the issues. And oh, never mind. We have kids voting, and this is where home children. All right, home children. And thinking or voting. I would agree. This is where your rising action comes in. Then now we have our climactic moment. Thanks for letting me know. Oh, all right. And and and. and, and and all right i would agree again the big fight is going to be your climactic moment and then of those two yep i did exactly right so now we have the following action and following action all right you guess what you're doing i would agree because the tv station fires air when discovered he no longer is in school and then Eric decides he wants to go back to school to get an education. He does not want to go back and really get fired. Well, you can't yell at me because you didn't read it. Right. I'm going to skip that one. I think you guys know about that. She said wordy words. All right. Now. You guys have an idea of how that works. We're going to apply it to a story. Those of you who are at home, I'm going to put story up on screen. You're going to get your copy of this tomorrow, and I'm going to give you your own shiny paper copy. Those of you who are here in person, I'm getting ready to give you your shiny copy now that you're going to put your name on because you get to keep it. And then when you go home tomorrow and you're going to do this class again, you get to have your own copy of it. So let me go ahead and hand it out, and then we're going to get to story. Ooh, wait. We're going to get to that. So on notes thing, we're getting ready to fill in the thing that says foreshadowing why I hand it out. One moment. If you know what foreshadowing is, go ahead and write it down. If you don't know what foreshadowing is, we're going to help you. Well, in that case, you're going to start the ball and jewel. I'm going to have to review that thing where I'm supposed to say out loud again. Thank you. My brain is broken. Just pull it out. I don't want you to put it on. Oh, um, sorry. It gets feedback. Oh, my gosh. It's a back pain. I know. Who would have words? Words in an English class? Next thing you know, the crazy man is going to make you want to read and understand things. Ugh. I know it's so long. You should just drop out of school now. So kids at home, they're freaking out because they did not know stories could be this long. It's a front side and a back side. I know four kids just dropped out of school right now. They just left and they're outside hiking, hiking home. Like Mr. Broviak, me dumb. 
I'm like, no, it's okay. But yes, every once in a while you're going to have stories that are going to have, it's okay. I'm reading the story to you. So we're going to experience it together. Speaking of things we're going to do together, foreshadowing. Do you guys remember Lady and the Tiger? Yeah. Remember how the story just ended? Yeah. Remember how you guys raged? Yeah. You guys remember how we read the voices and did the same thing? No. So, I know, but hang on before you rage at me in student revolution. I told you I was not going to do a story like that again, and I did not lie. This story does just end, literally in the middle of the conversation. It's just going along as part stops. But here's the thing. Foreshadowing allows us to know exactly, don't read the end of a charter, you horrible child. It means nothing until you read the whole story. Until you understand what foreshadowing is, you're going to understand the ending. You guys know what foreshadowing is? Foreshadowing is when the author gives you clues in the story as to what's going to happen. Like when you're like watching a horror movie and like they're walking around outside and you're like the spooky creaky thing because the monster's walking around and you're like, why would you go in the house? Don't you hear spooky creaky thing? And they're like, let's go inside this spooky creaky house. And you're like, oh my God, I can't. Same thing. That's foreshadowing. This story full of foreshadowing. If this story was a cookie and foreshadowing was chocolate chip cookie nugget things, then it would be full of chocolate chip cookie nugget things. So we uh, need to come closer so you can see. You can see right here. Maybe if you want to jump on your back. I didn't mean to make you squint from a distance. All right, so that's there. So this story, full of all of these little clues and things in there to try and help you out in one form or another. So that's what we're going to get to. All right, let's do this. Hang on one second. We're going to go ahead and scoot Nina, put you up a seat. And then, so Lee, I'll put you back in that seat right there. And then that way, we're not trying to have too many germs on each other. All right. So on this one, you're going to have to pick up on the clues in the story as we go through. Home children, I, I have the story here, so you're going to get a chance to see it, and that we don't have to freak out completely. You don't have to write anything down yet. We're going to get there. We're just not there yet. For now, just understand what's going on. I'll read this first part to you. What I want you to do is pay attention to who the characters are in the story. When is our story taking place? Because it gives you evidence. Where is the story taking place? It gives you evidence. And then have some idea of what's happening. Because I'm going to get done with this little first section of the dots are, that first beginning bits. I'm going to read that to you. Then go, who's our character? When is it taking place? What's your evidence? All those boring things. Oh, speaking of boring stuff, what do you call the beginning of the story? Nicely done. So we're going to get to the exposition. And then after we get to those dots, we're going to go to the next part. So what comes after exposition? Nicely done. Wow, such authority. All right. The voices. <clears throat> ah! The loud scream. Those bam. Like, see? Yeah, it makes it more lifelike. You're welcome. The loud scream woke Sam from his sleep. He sat up and flipped on the light next to his bed. A quick glance at the clock on his dresser told him it was five o'clock in the morning. And it took him a frantic moment to figure out what it was that had just woke him. It had been a scream. His own scream he realized. He thought for a moment as to what had caused a scream frightening enough to wake him up. The car crash, the fire, his family dying in the horrible blaze. The images came rushing back into his brain moments before the realization did. The realization that it had been a dream and not real. It had been a vivid dream. It only seemed eerily real, but it had just been a dream. Only a dream. He lay back in his bed and concentrated on relaxing. He still had an hour and a half before his alarm would go off for school. He had enough trouble today, well, with his math test and all, so worrying about a bad dream was the last thing he wanted to do. But man, it had seemed so real. It really spooked him. He could almost feel the heat from the fire, hear the screams of his family trapped in the burning wreckage, smell the icky fumes of burning rubber from the inside of the car mixed with the other smells he couldn't quite place and didn't want to. A smell that reminded him of summer barbecues for some reason and he knew he didn't like it. No, he shook his head and tried to clear the disturbing images from his mind. This wasn't helping. He turned off his bedside lamp and rolled over to go to sleep. In the quiet of his house, he could hear his own breathing. 
the dog, Nevada, snuffling around downstairs, and the creaks of the house in the night. But it was then, at that quiet moment in the middle of the night, he heard the voices for the first time. They were soft and foggy, but they were definitely there. And it scared him so badly that he wished he was dreaming again. We're coming. And then another voice, louder and much clearer. Dead. And then we stop. Right. That's what we have so far. We have character. Who's our character in story? Bam. Bam. Now, on this one, we don't know exactly his age, but there are clues to help you out. What clues help you to his age? Kasopa? Nicely done. So we know he's because he talks about having to go to school and having a math test. We don't know much more about that, but we know something about his age. Where is our story taking place? In his house. Nicely done. When is our story taking place? Five in the morning. Five a.m. Nicely done, Max Bell also. Then, at the beginning of the story, what wakes him up? Bad dream. Bad dream. Not a dream. A nightmare. A scream. Who screamed? Yeah. Nicely done. Tomorrow we find out more. Your homework is not read the story. Work on B.2 if you owe it to me. Those of you at home, you'll get your own copy of it. The rest of you, we'll see you later. Two tolls. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't you threaten me. Matthew's talking about stealing his brain apart.